name's Mike Tatlock, the lead pastor here at Grace Chapel. And I just want to speak on behalf of David and Paige and Andrew and Jacob and Isaiah. Just, we love you guys so much. And I know all of you are here because you love them. And you love them so much that you would show not just the support of today. I know many of you, the outpouring of love and support has been beautifully overwhelming. And I think that's what it means times like this, that we come together and we do everything that we can to comfort those who are close to us. And I think all of us can feel and be empathetic and sympathetic. And, but I also know that Paige and Dave, today we want to honor Matthew. And we want to celebrate his life, which was taken way, way too soon. And I know there's that angst that we all live in. We, we come here to a place like this. Maybe some of us have faith. Maybe some of us don't. And yet the one thing that we all have in common is that life is out of our hands. And we do everything we can to live our lives as best as possible. And, and then we have these tragic moments to realize we really aren't in control of anything. And, and the kind of reality faces all of us. But I know that Paige and David today would want to honor Matthew and that Matthew's story, his life, his faith, that would really be transferred over to the rest of us. And so on behalf of the whole family, thank you for being here. Um, now, Paige asked me to do something, and I, I think we need to honor her. And so I want you all to join us in that. Paige wanted me to take a panoramic picture from the stage. So we know, it's, Paige, I love that idea, by the way. I think that's awesome. You were so good at capturing moments. So will you guys just uh, join me as I pull out my phone? And uh, you don't need to do anything, but just do what you're doing right now. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a kind of a pano. Do it like doer. That's what you want everybody to say, Paige. Okay, let's do that. All right, on the count of three, and then I'll do the pano because I think it's just we should do that anyways. All right, you want to you want us to do do it like doer on the count of three. One, two, three. Do it like doer. I like that. All right, all right. Here we go. I'm going to check. I want to check. Oh, it looks really good, but I'm going to take a couple more just in case. <laughs> they didn't teach us this in seminary. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do one more. This time, I'm just going to do a kind of a portrait wide angle here. All right. Let me just get kind of a, oh, that's a good shot right there. I'm just going to do that. <laughs> okay. I think you're going to like those. I'll get those to you today. You know, the other thing, too, um, Oftentimes, when you come to a memorial service, there's a lot that you carry. There's a lot of stories that you have with those that we lose. In this case, it's Matthew. And one of the best gifts that you could ever give is your memories of Matthew, how he impacted your life, what he stood for, how he influenced you, how he inspired you. And so every seat that came in here, you have a white card. If you could grab that right now, would you mind doing that? And there are, are pens kind of sprinkled throughout, but if you could grab that piece of paper, here's what we'd love for you to do. We'd love throughout any time in the service that you can take that pen and just write down maybe a, a memory of Matthew. Maybe it was something he said, or maybe it was the way he did something that made you laugh, or maybe it was some words of inspiration, or maybe it was just he was there for you in some sort of way. And as we know Matthew, Matthew would light up a room. I mean, he just, he was a life giver. You know, we always say there's two types of people in this world. There are those that suck life from you and those who give life. Matthew was one that he just gave life. And it didn't matter who you were, where you're from, what you went through, that when you hung out with Matthew and you walked away, your life felt better. That's who he was. And so maybe you could take a moment and just fill out that card. And then before you leave today, there are two baskets in the lobby. And on your way out, if you could take those cards, write your name on them so we know who they came from, and drop them in the baskets, and that would be a beautiful gift for the family to put in an album and just cherish your thoughts and memories of who Matthew is, who Matthew was for all of us. You know, right now, I want to just take a moment, too, and just kind of remind us of Matthew's faith. And the Bible tells us that those who have faith in Christ, that even though we die, we're actually in the presence of Jesus. So we know right now with Matthew that he's actually in the presence of Jesus. I could almost say it this way. He's better off than all of us right now. And so, but it's hard because we're the ones left behind. We're the ones trying to make sense of all the why questions and the anger and, and all the frustration, the disappointment. And sometimes somebody looks at a religious guy like me and goes, come on, like, why would a good God let something happen to the most amazing man like Matthew? All those questions are real and all those questions are okay to have. And Jesus invites us to bring all those questions to him, 
all the emotions that go with that. In fact, the Bible tells us that those of us who have faith in Jesus, because we know that when we die, we are instantly in his presence, it tells us that we grieve, but we, we don't grieve like the world grieves that doesn't have hope. We grieve differently, so we still grieve, don't we? We still feel his absence. We still feel the pain and the loss, but it's a different kind of grief. It's a grief knowing there will be a reunion where we get to see him, and eternity is far longer than the time we had with him here. So we'll actually, in eternity, have more time with Matthew. And I think that's the hope that he lived. That's, it oozed out of him. If, if anything, the one thing Matthew would want for everybody that's here today to hear from him, if he was standing right here, he's like, I'm with Jesus. Y'all better say yes to him too. That's the one thing he would wanna say to everybody in the house right now. And so as we move further down the service, we're gonna have opportunities to cry. We're gonna have opportunities to laugh. And we're gonna have opportunities to hear things that we've never heard before, but we go, yeah, that was Matthew. That doesn't surprise me. But I wanna start off with the honor that I get to read his life story, and I'm gonna read it from the program that you have in front of you. So will you join me as I read through this? Matthew David Dewar, born to parents David and Paige Dewar on May 18th, 2005. He went from life to everlasting life on November 19th, 21. David and Paige brought Matthew home to a teeny tiny house in Portland, Oregon, while David attended chiropractic school. Brothers Andrew and Jacob soon joined their little family. Upon graduation from chiropractic school, the doers moved to Malala, where Isaiah completed their family. In 2011, when Matthew was seven years old, the Dewar family moved to Canby to start their own chiropractic practice. Matthew was the best baby. He was happy and active, curious about what life had to offer. As a small boy, Matthew loved to ride bikes, camp, and read. His favorite activity, however, was to dig in the backyard and build forts. Love that. In the fourth grade, Matthew started playing soccer and basketball. He quickly fell in love with basketball and dreamed of becoming an NBA basketball player. As Matthew grew into a young man, friends and family and his faith were his top priorities. He was also quite the entrepreneur. He always had a new business plan on his mind. Matthew's faith was the foundation of his life. Growing up in the church, Matthew was always in Sunday school, always attending vacation Bible school and Awanas. But Matthew's faith really became his own in middle school. He would be found reading his Bible on his own and always asking tough questions. He developed a hunger to be around other people that loved Jesus and loved participating in youth group. The highlight of his summer was attending summer camp. As a public declaration of his faith, Matthew was baptized in May of 2021 and consequently radiated the joy of the Lord. Matthew's biggest personality filled a room, and it was apparent to all those around him that he lived his life with a heavenly purpose. And I love this passage of Scripture, Matthew 28, 20, where Jesus said, I am with you always. Will you just join me in a word of prayer? And we're going to take a moment to, to watch a slideshow, and we're going to watch who Matthew was. And so as we do that, can we just prepare our hearts? Will you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, and I love the words of Jesus. Jesus, you gave us permission when you walked this earth. You walked in our own pain and our own sorrow. Uh, the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept in the context of a loved one that had passed away. And Jesus, you feel our loss. You feel our anger, you feel our questions and doubts, and yet you invite us with all of those to come before you, and that you promise in exchange that we can receive your comfort. We thank you that when we say yes to you, that you give us the hope of all eternity of spending with you, but even in this earth, you give us your spirit to comfort us. So we ask now, Holy Spirit, would you come be the comforter? We pray that as we listen, as we celebrate, as we honor, as we cry and laugh over Matthew's life, what he stood for, what he still stands for, that it would be the inspiration. And I know that the legacy of Matthew moves forward in each of our lives. When we look at his life for inspiration and for those of us in the room that looked at his faith, maybe today's the day that we join him with the same assurance that life is uncertain. But the one thing that is certain is that Jesus, you are for us and that our faith in you secures us in your presence for eternity. So we commit this time to you, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Will you guys turn your attention to the screens? He 
Climbs in my lap for a good night hug He calls me dad and I call him bud With his faded old pillow and a bear named Pooh He snuggles up close and says I wanna be like you Well, I tuck him in bed and I kiss him goodnight Tripping over the toes as I turn up the light And I whisper a prayer that someday he'll see He's got a father in God cause he's seen Jesus in me Lord, I wanna be just like you Cause he wants to be just like me I wanna be a holy for his innocent eyes to see Help me be a living Bible, Lord That my little boy can read I want to be just like you Cause he wants to be like me I've got to admit I've got so far to go Make so many mistakes and I'm sure that you know Sometimes it seems no matter how hard I try With all the pressures in life I just can't get it all right But I'm trying so hard to learn from the best Being patient and kind filled with your tenderness Cause I know that he learns from the things that he sees And the Jesus he finds will be the Jesus in me Lord, I want to be just like you Cause he wants to be just like me I want to be a holy example For his innocent eyes to see Help me be a living Bible, Lord, that my little boy can read. I want to be just like you, because he wants to be like me. Right now, from where he stands, I may see mighty tall, but it's only because I'm learning. to be just like me I want to be a holy example for his innocent eyes to see help me be a living Bible Lord that my little boy can read I want to be just like you cause he wants to be like me I want be just like you Cause he wants to be like me What does that say, Matthew? What does that verse say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall and perish and have an everlasting life. Look at that. <laughs>
When I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through when there's no way out. This one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So whatever. When I'm breaking, you'll be working Ooh. When there's no way out, this one thing I know That you're still on your throne So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason Well, I kind of gave it away when I called you up here, but if you want to share your name with us, that'd be great. My name is Matthew. <laughs> Dewar. Dewar, yeah. Some people yeah. might know your family. Cool. And how long have you been uh, involved here at Bethany Church? Well, I went here as a little kid and up to about sixth grade. You've been coming to youth group real regularly for the last uh, like three years, so? Yeah, like about that. three years. Cool. Very good. Okay. Uh, how did you come to know trust Jesus as your savior? Well, I accepted Jesus when I was really young, and I've always believed in him, but I think when I really started to take my faith seriously and make it my own was around sixth grade until now. Awesome. Cool. Or still keep going. Yeah, right. Not, not, this isn't the stopping point, right? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> keep going from here. Good. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> and how has God been uh, working in your life lately? I think he's been teaching me how to lead with more peace and trust in his plan and that I don't have to worry about the future and what's happening. Yeah. Cool. I can say I've seen that developing in you as well. <laughs> okay. Cool. Do you have a favorite verse you'd like to share with us? I don't have a favorite verse, but I have a key verse that is that sort of emphasizes the point that God is in control. It's Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Cool. Very good. And you kind of said why you like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing that God is ultimately in control, that's a yeah. very good thing. Cool. Well, Matthew, can you say with confidence today that you have trusted in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation? Yes, I can. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, first of all, Matthew, I'm very proud of you for taking this step and standing up to and as is making this a mild post in your Christian faith. And I want to charge you with the responsibility that the world is going to continually try to undermine you and make you fall short and reduce your effectiveness for his kingdom. And I just want you to know that nothing of fear is from God. All right. Lord, I just want to lift Matthew and these other candidates up as they are growing up in this wily, weird time of doubt and the fact that they're going to have to work harder to prove to others why their faith is important. And I just pray that you keep all the candidates and Matthew strong in their faith and help them to stand up with courage for their faith. Amen. It's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look what you've done How could you fall so far? You should be ashamed of yourself So I was ashamed of myself The lies I believed They got some roots, they run deep I let them take a hold of my life I let them take control of my life Standing in your presence, Lord I can feel you digging all the roots up I feel you healing all my wounds up All I can say is hallelujah
Suddenly all the shame is gone I thought I was too broken Now I see You were breaking new ground inside of me Standing in your presence, Lord I can feel you digging all my roots up I feel you healing all my wounds up All I can say is hallelujah Look what you've done Look what you've done in me You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe Look at me now Look how you made me new Oh, the enemy did everything that he could do Oh, but look what you've done On the cross, in a grave With a stone rolled away All my debt, it was paid Look what you've done In my heart, in my mind In my soul, in my life With my hands lifted high I'm singing, look what you've done Look what you've done in me You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe Look For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. My name is Josh, and uh, I was one of Matthew's uh, youth pastors. They're, you're going to know, uh, he, man, that kid was like in youth group 24-7, I think. Um, I, I think he had like four or five youth groups. Um, man. Uh, by the way, Paige and Dave, you did not age like a second. That when, when, the, when Matthew was born, I was like, you guys have not aged. Yeah, you grew the beard, but you didn't age. Like, I, that's amazing. Um, Anyways, yeah, I'm, my name is Josh Weaver, and uh, yeah, I did. I got to know Matthew when he was in sixth grade, so I was like his middle school pastor, um, and I just want to say, Paige and Dave, just thank you so much for letting me um, be here, and, and it's an honor to speak, and um, just to be a part of his life. Um, he meant a lot to me, and uh, man, you guys loved him so well. It's been so amazing to just witness is how you parent him. Um, when I think of myself becoming a parent, I just I want to I want to parent like you guys. I want to love your kids or my kids like you love your kids. And uh, yeah, I, I Matthew knew how much you loved him. You loved him really really well. And uh, Andrew and Jacob and Isaiah, he loved being your older brother. He really really did. I would just encourage you guys just let him to continue being your older brother play hoops for him, have joy with him, um, just take on the joy that, that he carried. I love you guys a lot, so, and we, we all love you guys a lot, so thank you for letting us celebrate him with you guys. Um, <clears throat> today, uh, this morning, God highlighted a passage, you know, it's Christmas season, and uh, you know, a lot of us focus on the birth of, of Jesus, and so there's a passage in, in Matthew, and we're just getting to the glimpse of, like, Jesus is, is, he's coming as a baby, and it says, look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which the word Emmanuel, the name Emmanuel means God with us. I do believe that God is, is with us when our ups and our downs and our celebrations and also our, our trials and our sorrows. Um, God is with us when, when we're hurting as well. I was really reminded of that this morning. 
I think, you know, a lot of us were, we're in a hurting season. I, I know, I have the confidence that, that God is with us. <clears throat> in the same way that, uh, you know, God is with Matthew right now. Matthew is surrounded by God's presence right now. I know we always think about that like, oh yeah, like Matthew's in the presence of God and it's amazing. I would also like to say it's amazing for God to be in the presence of Matthew right now. I really believe that. God loves Matthew. God loves Matthew so much. He also really, really likes him. I think there's a difference. It's kind of one of those like, well, you have to love me, mom, dad, or something like that. Like God, God likes Matthew. And he is enjoying just being with Matthew right now. Like he, it just, it lights him up. <clears throat> As I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I was the youth pastor. I'm the youth pastor here, and uh, I got to meet him in sixth grade. And um, one of the things that I will never just forget about Matthew is that, you know that, I'm sure we all know, the face that he just light, like his smile lights up his face so much, like those those eyes, and uh, I was actually uh, texting with one of his, his leaders, and he says this, the first thing that comes to mind was his contagious smile. He loved to be around people and bring joy to people. One of the things I, like, for me to describe Matthew is this, this joy, yes, um, and also, like, this, this, like, joyful innocence about him. I don't know if that makes sense to a lot of you guys, but to me, there's, like, this this innocence, and it's not like a like an immaturity, or it's not this um, shelteredness innocence. It's like this wholesome. He carried a very pure wholesomeness to him, and it, like it was really refreshing to be around Matthew. He Matthew was so refreshing. I remember as a sixth grade kid um, meeting him, he was just so like in awe of everything, you know, just saying, "Hey, what's up, Matthew?" And he just had this. He look up at me with those big eyes and that just amazing, again, contagious smile. And just, you you felt special. Like, you know, I'm trying to make him feel special and feel welcome to youth group and stuff, but he made me feel special. He made you feel important. He was really good about just being, like, in the moment with you and made you, like, like you are the center of attention right now. My wife was a, uh, Matthew was, was a different sixth grade kid than most sixth graders. Uh, my wife is checking kids in as they're coming in, into youth group. And she'd always say, like, it's interesting. Matthew, like, comes in as a sixth-grade boy and, like, asks how I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that is weird. Not, no, not many sixth-grade boys <laughs> to an adult woman says, hi, Emma, how are you doing today? And she's, like, shocked, like, uh, I, I, I'm doing good. How are, how are you? And, like, just actually, like, not the fact that he just asked a grown woman, like, hey, how are you doing today? How was your day? He also took the time to, to listen to her. <laughs> like, again, usually it's like, hey, and it's like going to the video games or whatever, you know. But no, Matthew wanted to check in on uh, everyone. He wanted to bring joy to people, um, and he wanted to, to, to just talk with them and be in that moment with them. <laughs> Me and, uh, for his 15th birthday, I don't know if you guys remember this, but a couple of years ago, during COVID, we didn't really have youth group as much, and so um, it was kind of cool for me to be able to just check in on kids and, like, go door-to-door -door and, you know, celebrate their birthdays that I don't normally get to do that. Um, and so I brought him a, a Dutch Bros drink, uh, some some type of poly blended rebel or something that, I don't know if you guys let your kids have those, but I let him that day. It's his birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> and again, I just remember, it was it's a simple Dutch Bros drink, but I just remember knocking on the door, coming he's coming over, and again, that just like awe, like the ooh and awe of him, just smiling and thinking like this was like a hundred bucks I just gave him. No, it was just a simple Dutch bros. But again, he made me even feel special on his birthday when I'm trying to treat him. And that was just who Matthew is. It made you feel important and so special. And so... Uh, Matthew has been a part of Grace Chapel for a while, I think since sixth grade, right? And uh, yeah, that's when I, when I was able to meet him. And we've been to a couple different locations and finally like this building's a little bit newer. And so I remember on opening day, we had like a little walkthrough and like a prayer time. And um, I was back there and he came up to me. He's like, dude, this is amazing. And if you could look around, you are sitting on a basketball court. And so this was his favorite part. He was like, this is so awesome. 
But what he said was this, we can do so much for the community with this place. We can invite so many people to play basketball and come to know Jesus. That was just like who Matthew was. He, he, he thought of people, he was considerate, and he just had this joy to him. He carried this joy with him. But the thing about Matthew is his joy also, you know, it wasn't just something that he faked. It was very real. It was very intentional, but it came from Jesus. I think that he would want you to know that. His joy truly came from knowing Jesus. And now he's experiencing complete joy while he is in the presence of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm really grateful for knowing Matthew, and I will miss him, as we all will. And my prayer is to have more of that joy that Matthew carried. That's, that's what I want to, I want to have that joy. I want to have those, that just that smile that made other people light up, that made them feel special and really important. And then this, this uh, verse just came, came to mind. It's in Psalm 16, 11. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Thanks for letting me kind of share some stories. Thank you, Paige and Dave. Hi, I'm David Bubing. I'm the youth pastor, one of Matthew's many youth pastors uh, at Bethany Church who uh, had the honor of baptizing him. If you knew Matthew, you knew what he believed. Not only did you know he believed things, but you knew what he believed because he was a man of strong convictions. I don't use that term man lightly. He was a man. He knew what he believed and he stood for it and he spoke with boldness about those things. You can ask any of the high school boys in our small group, but we always, didn't always agree about everything, and we had a few heated discussions in our small group. Uh, but even in the midst of those, Matthew and I had a, a deep love and respect for each other. And I believe there's one explanation for that. It's that what mattered most to Matthew was Jesus. And being around people who loved Jesus. Matthew was often frustrated by the things going on in the world around him. And yet he exuded a peacefulness and a joy that was incredibly unique. I think there's only one reason for that as well. And that is that he understood that Jesus is better than anything this world has to offer. He understood that even when the world around him did not make sense, that God is in control. And we like to say that, but for Matthew, that wasn't a cliche. He believed that deeply. Listen to these words from Psalm 139. Speak of the relationship that God has with the people that he's made. As you made all the delicate and inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Matthew's joy stemmed from the fact that he knew and was known by the God who created him. And he knew that that creator loved him deeply. That his creator was in control, even in hard times. Inside the flyer, there's a couple papers of Matthew's that I'm sure someone will point out, but I love how he ends what I want to do when I grow up. He ends it by saying, in the end, only God knows what will happen. So we don't have to worry. That's who Matthew was. 
Matthew had peace. Matthew had joy. His God knew every day, every moment of his life. Matthew had joy in that. Joy in being loved by Jesus. And that love drove him. Earlier this spring, Matthew texted and asked if we could chat. He just had a couple questions for me really quick that he wanted to ask. And so I cleared a little, like an hour out of my schedule that afternoon. And we grabbed a basketball and went out back. And after two and a half hours of questions, <laughs> we weren't done. So I had to tell him, uh, my family is at home waiting for me for dinner. So I think I better get going. Matthew always had questions and that day, and, and most days, his questions revolved around the people that he loved. Uh, he, he loved to talk about theology and complicated things, but it always came back to concrete, concrete, the people that he loved. He wanted them to know Jesus. How could he share Jesus with them? How could he help hurting people, not in some theoretical way, but like actually get in their life and help them in real ways? At summer camp back in July, we had a, a night where we went out to the beach and we just sang and prayed together. And that night I saw a fire growing in Matthew as he prayed for everyone he saw. And he wasn't doing it as some way to get recognition or um, for people to think that he was like super spiritual. You just saw his heartbeat, his love for the people around him. That he saw hurting people and he was attracted to them and he desired to share the love of Jesus with those people. Matthew's heart and his actions matched those of his Savior. He prayed for me that night. He prayed for so many people that their hearts would be filled with a fire and a passion for Jesus. That they would know the peace that comes from seeing and clinging to Jesus as their Savior. Uh, he poured out his heart to me that night about his desire to see our youth group grow and change and to be, become more like a family, more loving of one another, more caring for one another, praying for one another, not just getting together, but actually being a place where Jesus' heart was seen clearly, a place that was filled with passion for Jesus. And, and I just want to say I know that that is Matthew's heart for every person here. If you knew Matthew, he wanted more than anything for you to know Jesus. And not simply to know about Jesus, but to know him personally, experience his love, his goodness, and to rest in that goodness. And have confidence that even as Matthew stands before his Savior with perfect peace and joy, he still, he still wants that for you. And so that's the question that I want to leave you with. Do you know Jesus? The God who shaped Matthew's life, the one who offered the peace, joy, and love that we all saw in Matthew, that, that we crave, that we love, that, that came from his relationship with Jesus. If you don't know that Jesus, don't leave today without talking to someone, any of the pastors here, would love to talk to you. I would love to talk to you and answer any questions. Matthew knew his God. He found hope in that. And I pray that you have found your hope in Jesus as well. Dave Page, Andrew Jacobs, and Isaiah, <clears throat> I am deeply sorry for your loss. And also, thank you for being absolutely an amazing family, parents that you are. It's very clear why you guys get voted parents of the year every year in home group. <laughs> you guys have been an amazing example of what it's like to truly cling to the cross 
and the power that you, and the hope that you guys have. So thank you very much for that. Um, thank you for actually living out what it means to be a parent in extremely difficult times. And I just want to read a verse over you. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 7. Matthew's name means gift of God. And Matthew Dewar was a very, very great, beautiful gift to me. Julie and I and Zion walk a lot in the Canby community. We live in the same neighborhood for a long time, Tofty Farms and Canby, and everywhere we went, we saw Matthew. <laughs> he was running, dribbling a basketball, riding his bicycle, doing all three at the same time. <laughs> and the amazing thing about Matthew is, is that's really where our friendship was forged. It was forged, and every time we saw him, because we saw him everywhere in the Canby community, he always stopped to say hi. I had more powerful two- and three-minute conversations with that young man than I can ever um, hope to have in a lifetime. And I would see him in the back as him and Dave would come in, and he would always stop and say hi. And it was a real gift of a friendship, right? Who else is going to put up with a 52-year-old bald, overweight guy, right? <laughs> But he would always just say hi. And it was a, just a gift to see him and the joy that he brought. And our gift or our friendship kind of grew. He'd come over to the house because we had some very, very common interests. We loved basketball. We loved basketball shoes. And then I got him into eBay. Sorry about that. Because he had cards and he had a collection. So he'd come over to the house and we would strategize and we would talk and we would have some great conversations. And that friendship continued to grow. But really the foundation of our friendship came two years ago today. We were in El Salvador. His dad, David, Matthew, Leo, Vaughn, and myself got the opportunity to go to El Salvador. And again, that's where our friendship was forged. We went on a living water trip. Living Water is an amazing organization that goes into communities throughout the world and brings fresh, clean drinking water to communities who desperately need it in an opportunity to share the gospel. And I saw Matthew share the gospel. If your last name is Dewar, you work hard, right? So that was going to be a given when he was there. Because you have to do some work. And also we hit clean water the first day. So we had a chance to... Um, do some other things. And what I was really amazed with Matthew about was the relationships that he built with the people in the community. Yes, he worked hard. And he also, whether it was the kids or the adults, he engaged. He truly cared. He was kind because he wanted to share the gospel of Jesus. He was a rock star down there, right? And it was actually two years ago today, Dave, that it was that Friday when our work was done and we just got to do a lot of amazing things reflecting on that trip. Thank you for taking the time to go with your son and investing in them that way because I am positive those people in that community are still talking about Matthew Dewar because he had an amazing influence. One of the things that I've done in my reflection of Matthew is go through our text exchange. It started when we were in Italy when we found out the news and I found comfort. It's a way to connect with him. And I actually want to read to you the last text exchange we ever had. Hey, is there any way you could meet tonight? I sold an item on eBay and need a little help. I said, I won't be home until 9 to 9.30. You can call me. There was this kind of this long pause, I think an hour or two, and he goes, never mind. I figured it out. <laughs> Matthew Dewar, through some amazing parenting, had figured out why he was here on earth. He was here on earth to worship and pursue a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And he did that. His fingerprints, the impact on my life and the 97013 and beyond 
is enormous and great because he truly loved Jesus and he wanted everyone to know that. For the believer in the room, those who are already following Jesus, I'm going to invite you into some challenges with me. The first one is really hard. Turn your why God to a complete trust in the sovereignty of God. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In the why question, you will go to a depth that only the Holy Spirit can meet you in. We will never be able to answer the why. And also, I invite you with me to truly trust in the sovereignty of God. The second thing is to live a life of joy like Matthew. Matthew being content in every circumstance. Hold me accountable to that, please. Matt Taylor, are you living a life of joy like Matthew Dewar? Be bold when you share Jesus like Matthew. That was a great living example of what it's like to proclaim and be bold in your faith about Jesus. Encourage others like Matthew. I think it's pretty safe to assume in our society we could use some more encouragement, right? Go out of your way to encourage others like Matthew did. The last one is let the light of Jesus shine in you like it shone so brightly in Matthew. In everything he did, his light shined. It was so evident, it was so clear, the love that he had for Jesus. For those who don't yet know Jesus, I don't have any challenges for you. I have a question though. When you take your final breath, will you run into the arms of Jesus and see Matthew do her again? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. It is the prayer of the Dewar family and myself and all the other believers in the room that if you do not yet know Jesus, You can do that now, and you can do that today. Dave, Paige, Andrew, Jacob, and Isaiah will spend eternity with Matthew. Last time I checked, eternity is a long, long, long time. I love you guys greatly. Thank you for inviting me into the beautiful life that was Matthew David Dewar. And it's been a real honor to speak about him today and the tremendous impact that he's had on my life. I have Cousin Carol come up and sing. would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Now what I'd give for one more day with you. Because there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place Where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine The only scars in
that hold you now. Hi, I'm Andrew, Matthew's brother. Matthew was the best big brother in the world. He always pointed me to God, and he was bold with his faith. I want to thank Matt Taylor, Josh Weaver, David Buving, and all of my family here for fostering his faith throughout his life. I want to thank Taj, Sean, and Silas for being the kind of friends that allowed him to be who God wanted him to be. I want to thank my mom and dad for being good Christian role models and being there for us whenever we needed them. 
I have a lot of memories of Matthew, but one that will always stick with me is it actually happened about a month ago, and I was trying to learn how to do a backflip on the ground, and I had been training a lot on the trampoline, and but Matthew had not, and <laughs> I, I was too chicken to try and do it onto the mattress, and Matthew's like, it's not that hard, so he got up on the couch, and he tried it. Um, he failed, but I got a really nice video. <laughs> and then I will always remember the time we spent shooting hoops outside. Um, whenever he noticed I was outside, he would always come out, and he always wanted to spend time with me out there. We'd work on our form, and he'd always ask me about his. We'd always 1v1 each other. It was awesome. Um, another thing, um, it's not just one moment, but it's just piled up over a few years. Um, me and my brother, every morning and night, we would wash our faces, and we always wash our faces at the same time, right next to each other, and we didn't say anything, but we just grew in our relationships during that time, and it was just wonderful. I'll always remember that. If he looked back on his life, he wouldn't regret it. He lived his life to the fullest with adventure, love, highs, lows, and a hope that he would one day meet the creator of the universe. I can say with confidence that Matthew is in heaven right now with God waiting for us. I don't know if it's a privilege or not to be able to speak at your own child's funeral or celebration of life. Um, but one of the things that has been very helpful is we got kind of a non-parental view of his life. And you all might not have that privilege of knowing how your child has affected their world. Dear Matthew, Thank you for spending 16 years of your life on this earth with us. You are the son that made me a father for the first time. There are a lot of tears and laughter as we reminisce on your short life. The last few weeks of your life were some of the best. You were the happiest you'd ever been, the easiest to raise, the most pleasant to be around, and it was a time when you were maturing the most in your Christian life. You left on a high note. No one thinks they'll have to start a day with what, one less child. It's not the natural order. The rainbow isn't complete when blue is missing. It's like someone took a large eraser to our family of six. Like he never existed, only having been a figment of our imagination. The pictures and memories tell a different story, proving that not only did you exist, but you truly lived. I keep waiting for you to run through that front door with your goofy grin to tell us about school, basketball practice, or youth group. Just hearing you say, let's go, one more time with thumbs up would bring some peace to my heart. I miss your presence. I know that I will never experience peace dwelling on the what ifs or never got the chances to. My peace and hope come from knowing that I will hold you again. This confidence comes for one reason and one reason alone. We both know and have Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Despite the sorrow, there is hope, evidenced by his work in your life and mine. I know I grieve in my earthly mind with your early departure. I must also admit you are the happiest you have ever been. There is hope in knowing you're experiencing an unfettered, unconditional joy. Today, we commemorate your life and celebrate the transition to eternal life. Every day since you crossed over, Mom and I have been inundated with words of encouragement and anecdotes from others of how you touched their life or that of their loved ones. It's been a blessing getting to know you from a non-parental perspective. I am thankful for the legacy you left behind. My legacy is not a one-time event, but a culmination of my life's intention. You are challenging me to live a life that makes me a better witness for Jesus. It's in these moments God calls us to press into him. Forever, I will be challenged to live like you did. Old age is not a prerequisite to leaving a legacy. 
but it comes from how effectively we live the moments given to us. Keep cheering us on with the other witnesses as we run or escort baskets and get closer to the end of our race. I will definitely have some harder days ahead, but I enjoyed every minute I had while you were with us on this earth. Love, Dad. Well, that's going to be hard to follow. <clears throat> I wanted to go first, but <laughs> he wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, and they were teasing me because his page is one page long and mine is five. So buckle your seatbelts. I wrote it down just in case. Um, Matthew David. <clears throat> David and Grandpa John's namesake. My one and only Matthew. My firstborn son, brother, grandson, nephew, cousin, and friend. Being the firstborn is special. With Matthew, we got to experience all of our first parenting moments. I actually had a conversation with him last summer, and I told him how special that was to be the firstborn. But then I had to apologize because he was the firstborn, and he is the one that we made all of our parenting mistakes on. <laughs> he laughed and said it was fine. <laughs> There's always been an excitement about what will come next for him. <clears throat> but he was the one whom we got to experience what the love of a parent is for the first time. I had no idea a love like that existed. It's a love that says, I want to drink in everything about you kind of love. I, or the love that says, I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for your future kind of love. Or an I would do anything for you kind of love. I remember when we drove home from the hospital with him for the first time, and I couldn't believe that God had entrusted us with such a perfect gift. Matthew was the best baby ever. He was so full of energy and very curious. He would hold his little pointer finger out and say, ooh, 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 like at everything. <clears throat> Matthew started to walk when he was one, but it wasn't really a walk. It was, it was more of a run. He was so sweet and innocent. One day when we went to Winco to do our grocery shopping, he pointed with the same pointer finger at the pumpkins and shouted, Jesus loves me. I had just read him a story called The Pumpkin Parable, and he, I, he must have been thinking about it. <clears throat> When he was about five, the pediatrician forecasted that he would be very tall, like somewhere between six to six and a half feet tall. Um, I knew the doctor was correct when his two front teeth came in. They were so big, I knew his body was going to have to catch up with them. <laughs> I think he was in seventh grade when we bought him his first uh, pair of size 14 tennis shoes. <laughs> His limbs were so long, it was a challenge for him to be coordinated at times. <clears throat> he was definitely a 100% boy, always up for anything. I was a l always a little bit worried when I would take him um, to, the well, to the pediatrician for his well-child appointments because he always had bruises all over him. <laughs> the doctor reassured me that she liked seeing that because to her that meant he was living his best life. It kind of feels unusual if we don't head to the emergency room at least once a year, being a family with four boys. Um, one time I was in the kitchen and I heard a blood curdling scream from the backyard. It was Matthew. Apparently he was shooting an arrow on his bow and as he released it, a splinter from the arrow went right through the web of his hand. He pulled it out and said he was fine and he didn't want to go to the doctor because that meant we would miss seeing the reptile man at the library. <laughs> so of course he convinced me to go to the library. So as we were sitting there looking at all these creepy crawly slimy things, um, I was looking closer at his injury. Well, it looked like there was something stuck in there. So I was like, oh no. We ended up at the doctor and then the doctor sent us to the emergency room and 
so at Dornbecker, um, well, the doctor thought that there was still something in there, so she thought it was going to have to be cut out. Um, but it was so funny because the staff there kept calling him Robin Hood. <laughs> it was always an adventure for him, for sure. <clears throat> One day the boys came home from school, and I was so excited to tell them that I had spent my day signing them up for vacation Bible school, basketball camps, and soccer camps for the summer. And Matthew got so mad. He was like, why did you do that? All I want to do this summer is dig, build forts, and read. <laughs> I was like, amen, in my head. Anyway, so the next day, of course, I went down to the library and signed them up for the summer reading program, and I headed straight to Fred Meyer, and I bought the, them the most sturdy garden trowels I could find and had it waiting for them on the table, their table spot when they got home from school. <laughs> um... Matthew and Andrew dug holes that whole summer. They were so deep, I could not see Isaiah when he was standing in the hole from my kitchen window. They even dug a tunnel to connect their holes and little cubbies to store their shovels in, in their, oh my. One day, unbeknownst to me, they had decided to fill their holes with water and take a bath. <laughs> oh man. Um, when, they, when it was all said and done, they thought they were going to be able to come into the house and shower off. But unbeknownst to them, they actually uh, had to hose off themselves outside. They didn't think that was very cool. <clears throat> Matthew had so much fun with his brothers. Overall, I think it was the little things that were so powerful. Things like playing Monopoly, shooting hoops, or riding bikes together. Even hanging out, watching a movie, or playing ping pong together was special. At night, Matthew and Andrew would always brush our teeth and wash our face and things together. We were all in bed, but we could hear them. They were so loud. <laughs> I, I had to fight back from telling them to quiet down. But in those moments, I think those will be the moments that we miss the most. Matthew val valued family. <clears throat> He loved going to Sunday lunch at both grandparents' homes. He would go even if we couldn't be there. It wasn't unusual for him to reach out to his uncles, aunts, and grandparents when he was thinking through something and wanted a second opinion. One time, he just randomly said, Grampy and I have a lot in common. And I was like, hmm, how so? And he goes, oh, you know... We both love to play chess, we love basketball, and we love to make money. <laughs> he dearly loved Karsten and Eliza like they were his siblings, bringing them his special Hot Wheels to bribe them into bed when he would babysit. He loved riding motorcycles, the Razor, the four-wheelers with his uncles, but actually he just loved doing anything with them. Matthew was always thinking about something or listening to a podcast. Usually it had to do something with making money. One day, he, he asked me if I would buy him a book. And I was like, yeah, I'll buy you a book. And I was like, what do you want? And he said, rich dad, poor dad. <laughs> that did not surprise me at all. He had a business plan um, that he was totally going to live out but he did not want me to share it with his brothers because he was afraid they were gonna steal his idea. <laughs> the summer between his freshman and sophomore year, we required him to take Driver's Ed and Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University for Teens online course. We could tell he had a mind for finance. He had so many questions, we told him that he should head on over to 4 Financial and speak with Colin. So he called him up, made an appointment, and hopped on his bike and rode on over. <laughs> when he came home, he said that he wanted to start an IRA. <laughs> we told him he had to finish all the investing modules in the financial peace class before he could do that. <laughs> soon after he started his, uh, soon after that, he started his shoe selling business. Of course, he encountered some pitfalls, but I was so shocked at how he could make money buying and selling shoes. 
he really had an entrepreneur mind. Last summer, he had his first job at Willamette Valley Country Club washing dishes. And the first thing he did with his paycheck was start his IRA. <clears throat> he was always riding his bike everywhere. He loved to be out and about with his friends. I can't tell you how many times people would tell me that they saw him riding about town. He loved it. It was probably the freedom that it gave him. It was a big day when he got his license. He was such a good driver. He was such a blessing to me as he helped transport the kids whenever he could. He was so responsible as he would call me when he was out and about and let me know where he was. Or if he was going to go somewhere else, he would let me know or ask me if he could go somewhere else. That was such a blessing to me. I never worried about him. <clears throat> the coolest part about Matthew was his faith in God. I would walk into his room and catch him reading his Bible. He was such a good kid that if ever something would come out of his mouth that was snarky or a little harsh, within one to two minutes, he would turn around and say, hey, I'm sorry, that I didn't intend for that to come out that way. The way he lived his life, there wasn't any unfinished business in any of his relationships. I think camp was one of the most pivotal times for him. When he came home from camp, that is when he decided to make the change and go to school at Country Christian. He always had a hunger to be around people who loved Jesus like he did. On the first day of school at Country Christian, he got into the car and said, well, I think this is going to be a good thing. And then later he said, when you walk through the doors at Country Christian, everyone says hello, and it feels like a family. He loved it there. <clears throat> he didn't like running, but he was good at it. But he loved being with the kids on the team. He was looking forward to playing basketball this year. He was having so much fun living his best life, going to the open gyms and practices. I could feel his excitement deep inside of him. He was excited for more playtime and the possibility of going to state. <clears throat> Matthew has always been surrounded by an amazing community of people that truly loved him. I'm so thankful for all of his Sunday school teachers, basketball coaches, youth group leaders, friends, parents of friends, and family who all contributed to his heart for the Lord. It truly takes a village to raise a child. So I thank you for being our village. We love Camby so much. The past three weeks have truly, we have truly seen the body of Christ at work in our community holding us up when we can't hold ourselves up. Thank you for all your outpouring of love over us. <clears throat> David and I have no regrets with our Matthew. We have done all the things. We walked through him. We've walked with him through life the best we knew how to. We took the family vacations. We built the memories. We did all the things. He was the best. People have been amazed at how well we have been traversing this horrible event, but I truly believe the Lord has been preparing my heart. When COVID started, we decided to read the Bible through together as a family. That was so powerful. I think it truly brought us together. I think it brought all of our minds and centered us in on what is truly important. It helped us forget all the drama in this world. Um, so I feel like as we were reading through the Bible, you know, every time you read, the Lord kind of shows you something different, you know, that he wants you to hear at that time in your life. For me, it just kept popping out on the pages. I was created to worship him over and over. I was created to worship him. Over and over, the Lord told me that. Our home group <clears throat> read a book last year um, on Psalm 23 that our God will provide 
all of our needs. I truly believe God did that to help prepare my heart, to help give me a deeper understanding of Psalm 23 for today, for this season in our lives. When school started, we didn't have time to do our morning Devo and read, finish the read through the Bible. We have 10 days left until we have finished reading the whole entire Bible. That's kind of cool. We're gonna do it at Christmas, over Christmas vacation. But I started doing my own Devo after everybody would go away and go off to school. I started uh, reading a devotional. And at the end of every day, it asked me two questions. And the first one is, who is God? And I would sit there and just pray, Lord, who are you? Who are you? And every day, he would whisper in my heart, I am your creator. Every day, I am your creator. 21 days, you guys, I am your creator. Question number two was, what do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do? And I would just sit there and pray and be quiet and wait for him to speak into me. Lord, what do you want me to do? And he would say, I'm not kidding, every day he said the same two words. He said, home, whispered it into my heart, home. And then he whispered, peace, into my heart. And after 21 days of that, I was thinking, okay, I, I, I told my home group the Tuesday before Matthew died, I shared all of this with my home group. And I said, I can't help shake the feeling that he wants me to create a peaceful home, a home, a place of refuge, a place of peace for my family to be, to come, to feel safe before a storm. I can't shake that feeling. I said it the Tuesday before he died. Another little gift that I feel like the Lord gave me was the night before he died. <clears throat> oh, he was so excited about these new shoes he got in the mail. And, <laughs> oh, what is it? Was it Dr. Uncle Drew? Uncle Drew. Okay. They were, there. I guess there's a famous player, coach. coach. I don't know. Someone <laughs> famous named Uncle Drew. And there was a movie about him. And he had these certain shoes on. And Matthew just got those shoes in the mail. And um, they were used. They were like, not even, I was like, why did you buy those? He's like, these are iconic. These are awesome. <laughs> and uh, he was like, mom, you got to watch this movie with me. You got to watch this movie with me. I am so glad I watched the movie with him the night before he died. And um, also that night too, a little present from the Lord. I, you know, we hadn't been reading our daily Devo together and we've all just been kind of doing our own thing. And so I asked him, hey, Matthew, are you still reading your Bible? He was like, yeah, mom, <laughs> every day. And I was like, awesome. And he goes, oh, I'm just, I'm just mostly memorizing scripture for my discipleship team meeting. But yeah, every day. And, you know, for a parent to hear that, that was just like a soothing bomb to my heart. And I don't think to check in with all of my kids all the time. I just happened to do it that night. And I am so thankful. That is a precious gift from my Lord to know that. Um, the, ne the day he died, the Lord gave me a picture. And I just saw a golden basketball court. Matthew is standing on it, and he was playing one-on-one -on -one with my brother with a golden ball. And I, I think the Lord gave that to me, a little gift. Matthew's living his best life, playing basketball on a golden court. A lot of people, I, someone said, I, I want to raise my kids like yours. I want my, my kids to be like yours. Um... And, you know, how do you do it or whatever? <clears throat> I think it's the legacy that our parents have left for us. The legacy.
Is it on? Okay. I, so I think it was completely the legacy that our parents left for us, that our parents, it was important to them to take us to church. It was important to them to show us how to walk in the way of the Lord. It was important to our parents enough to have daily devotions with us. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you and John for that, for giving us that legacy. So if anything else, I think that's what I want to leave you guys with, is leave that legacy with your children. Make that a priority in your life and as you are a parent. And take those moments to go on the family vacations and watch the movies and play basketball with your kids. Thank you. I, I just have to say one more time that we are so thankful for the support network. There's a lot of people here, but there's a lot of people that helped with our kids and continue to do so. Coaches, teachers, um, family members, and parents, don't take for granted your littles. And young people, don't take for granted your friends. I, uh, I'm listening to every word, David and Paige, that you shared, and um, I don't think there's anyone in the house right now that doesn't think about how we need to be more intentional with our relationships in our lives. Um, we talk about Matthew thinking of retirement and uh, thinking of his investing in that, and, you know, he invested in other people, and there was a great return on his investment. Um, already, and so we're gonna we're gonna take a moment right now because we really think as much as it was a gift for us to hear those words of thoughts and inspiration, and I think it's really a gift as well to speak our own thoughts out on Matthew's. So we're gonna have an opportunity right now. We're gonna have what we call a roaming mic, and what that means is just if there's anybody here, we're gonna just gonna take a few minutes for this. But if there's anyone here and students, I want to encourage you as well. If you're a student here, um, I know this is really hard, but this could be. This could be a really healing opportunity for you to speak as well, too, not just the adults. And so we're going to open it up right now if there's anyone that wants to just share maybe a funny memory, a word, a thought, or uh, just an, an idea in honor of Matthew. Just lift your hand up. We have mics, and we'll come meet you wherever you're at. So let's just take some time, and we're going to open up the space for that. If there's anybody, just go ahead and raise your hand. All right, uh, I'm Elijah Walbaum, and uh, I met Matthew August at Canby Cross Country Meet. All right, um, October 20th, he was at our youth group. He had another youth pastor he had, which is like <laughs> his fifth one or whatever. Uh, <laughs> he, we were worshiping, and he came up to my pastor, who's actually right here, youth, youth pastor right here. Um, he came up to him with tears in his eyes and was just like in awe of like the love of God he was feeling that night. And he decided to, I'm sorry, I'm shaking right now. <laughs> he decided to rededicate his life to the Lord. And Randy told him to start reading Romans 8 every day until God told him to stop. So he had been reading Romans 8. And then the Wednesday before he passed, he was leaving youth group, and Randy saw him and ran to him and asked, hey, Matt, where are you going? And Matthew was like, I got to get home. My parents told me I got to go home because it's late and I have school tomorrow. And uh, Randy was like, hey, Matt, how are you doing? Matthew's like, I am doing great. And one of the verses in Romans 8, 
is Romans 8:38, which says, and I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And Randy asked Matthew, why are you doing so great? And Matthew said, because nothing can separate me from the love of God. Wow. That's powerful. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. That's good. So my name is Sinjin Gro, and I ran cross country with Matthew. I got the privilege of doing that. And the amount of energy and positivity he brought to the team was just amazing. He cheered for everyone. He was always, like, wanting everyone to improve and do better, which was just amazing to see that at such a young age he was willing to, like, encourage everyone to keep pushing and driving. So, yeah. That's good. Um, I'm Audrey Burke. Um, I've known Matthew for a very long time. Um. <laughs> And the first adjective that comes to my mind when I think of Matthew is, is caring and how caring he was. Um, whenever I saw Matthew, he, was, he would always ask me how I was doing. And no matter what, good or bad, I would always tell him because I was never afraid to share how I was doing to him. And he would always listen and he'd always give me great advice and just be there for me and it was good to know that I had a friend like that mm. and he would he was always so encouraging and especially when I started cross country this year and I was extremely nervous my first cross country meet and he was there and it was just he was just cheering for me so much and it was good to know that somebody cared enough to cheer and just be there to support me. Seeing everyone here seeing so many uniforms. It, it's amazing the impression that Matthew made on everyone here. I mean, you, there's some saying in a poem somewhere that you can't feel a breeze. Or you can't see a breeze, but you can feel it. You can't see the warmth of the sun, but you can definitely feel its impact. We might not be able to see Matthew, but there is no doubt that he is here yeah. in every face. Every kid, I mean, I, some people don't, a lot of people here won't know who I am or even my name. Some people might know me as a ref. That's about it. But getting, Matthew was, I, I got to ref him, we, we, you know, maybe a little bit of coaching in, in between games in, during timeouts or at halftime. It was maybe the second year that I started doing this, and it was uh, a friend of mine. Jason Pepper asked me to come help out. And it was just to help out. I moved to Washington. It was, Canby was a little ways away. It was, it was kids like Matthew that made coming back, make, made the trip so worth it. And, and to see, you know, and to come back and get, getting to experience. Every one of these guys, I did girls one year, but every one of these guys, two even yesterday, Isaiah, <laughs> um, it's been a tremendous blessing. He was so positive. People talked about just some of the different things, growing into his body. Well, when you're in fourth grade and you're the tallest kid on the floor and you're almost as tall as the ref, <laughs> he was definitely growing into his body. And some of that had to be frustrating. But no one, no one played the game harder. No one played it with a more positive spirit. Even if he was a little frustrated that he wanted to go this way and his legs wanted to go that way, <laughs> he just, it was, it was one of the most positive experience that it was my pleasure to have. He was kind of quiet. There was a quiet determination about him. But when he did speak, it, it, it was words of encouragement for a teammate or maybe just encouragement to himself, kind of a let's go 
under, under his breath. And I'm, my understanding is that may have gotten a little louder as he got older. Um, but just a tremendous kid. And to see the way that the community has come out for him, for his family, Dave Page, it, it speaks volumes to who he is. Um, my name is Lonnie Hester, and I'd like to speak to uh, the Dewar family over there. Uh, the Lord has impressed on me to share this, and if you think about it, to my knowledge that Jesus died and rose again when he was in his 30s, which, if you do the math correctly, that was about 1990 years ago. Some would say that that's a very long time since Jesus once we're on this planet, but when I look at your son, I would say it wasn't that long ago that he was here through everything I saw through Matthew, and I only knew him for about a couple months when he ran on a team and came to our school, but I could see Jesus in every second of uh, Matthew's life. And there was these words from our pastor the day he died is, you know, if you knew him for a minute, you felt like you knew him forever. And I'd say that yeah. do through the only few months that I knew him, I felt like I knew Jesus better than anybody through your son. So thank you for blessing this world through him. That's powerful. Uh, hi, I'm Maddox Oliver. Um, the story I'd like to share with Dewar is my freshman year, me and Matthew were the only freshmen on the varsity cross country team. And we happened to have, my first race was districts, which if you don't know, is the most important one. And I remember I was so nervous. I was so nervous and I felt like I could really relate to him because we were in the same boat. And he, like, I've never seen it before from another person, but he gave me so much confidence to do my best and to just give it everything I got. And I think Matthew did that with a lot of people in this room. He was so positive and was just a shine um, in everyone's life. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. So um, we, we, uh, we'd known the doers from years ago. We were, went to church with them and uh, we're in a home group with them. Um, <clears throat> Paige actually, uh, would babysit our daughter when she was first born. And uh, Matthew, I remember, was always like her helper. I think he uh, missed out on not having a sister. So, <laughs> but uh, so I, I just, uh, we remember the boys more from when they were small. And then, you know, we started going to a different church. And then we saw Matthew, like, it had only been a few years and he like doubled in size. It was <laughs> so crazy. Um, but, uh, the thing I wanted to share is kind of a funny story. Like, you know, people have talked about Matthew and, and uh, just how pure he was, what, you, what a kind-hearted person he was. Um, and, and he was so inquisitive. He, he was so curious about things. I remember one night we were at home group and uh, we raised pygmy goats. <laughs> so uh, it was her idea to bring one of the baby goats to, uh, we were meeting at the church, <laughs> our home group. And I don't know if I should share this story. We never actually had permission to bring the goat there, but <laughs> I think statute of limitations has passed on that. But um, I was so interested. We didn't have kids yet. I was so interested to uh, see what the kids' reaction would be, and especially Matthew, like what questions he would have or whatnot. And, uh, you know, and he, I think he did have some questions, like asked about the goat or what they, you know, what, what it eats and stuff like that. But I just remember, like, Matthew having this idea, I know what we can do. Let's chase it. <laughs> and they spent, all the kids, this whole night, it was just like this stampede from Jumanji chasing this goat around the church. Well, I guess we were trying to talk about spiritual stuff. I don't think too much spiritual work happened that night. But um, all boy, like Paige said. So. Hello, my name is Casey. Uh, and uh, Matthew was a amazing friend and uh, <laughs> encouragement through everything. <laughs> and 
I'm just so happy I got to meet him. <laughs> My name is Kyle Seifert, and uh, I met Matthew the Thursday before school started at Country Christian. And uh, that was the day we were chauffeuring to lockers and stuff like that. And I didn't introduce myself to him, but he was, like, proudly there, ready to introduce himself to me. And I was taking him, and I think it was Jacob, to their lockers. And uh, right before I showed him his locker, um, he put his, both of his arms on my shoulders, and he shook me, saying, I didn't get your name. <laughs> so I sat there and told him my name, and then he goes, all right, he goes, uh, and he goes, all right, let's do the locker. So we sat there for a couple minutes doing the locker, and then it was Jacob's turn. We took Jacob to his locker, and then um, Matthew was like, hey, his name's Kyle. He's not just nameless. And I was like, laughed so hard. Um, and then I think it was a week later on a Wednesday, he asked me uh, if I played sports, and I told him I played football, and I had a game this Friday. And it was our first home game, and I invited him to come to the game. Came to the game and uh, we lost by like quite a bit. And he, at the end of the game, came over and I sat on the bench the whole game and he goes, good job. And I was like, I didn't do anything. He goes, well, still, he goes, you'll do better in the next game. I was like, all right, thank you. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of pictures with him, me, and a couple of our friends. And then right after that, he walked over to the Kennedy, our opposing team, and he took so many selfies. <laughs> And he, he walked back, and it, I think it was maybe a day or two after that, I was going through a rough time. It was, like, just an issue that I had. And he told me, he recited Philippians 4.13. He said, through all things, or you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I started, like, I, I fell. And I just, like, emotionally, not, like, not fell, but, like, my heart just dropped for, like, that split second. And I just felt like I... I felt loved, and it's really, it's really, really hard. I miss him, and um, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Dewar, for raising such a good son. It's so powerful, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm just going to look one more time, see if there's any last minute opportunity, one last, maybe, oh, right here, yeah. Hi, my name is Jesse Zimmer, and uh, I go to CCS, or I went to CCS with him, and uh, he would work out with me and a couple dudes in the morning, and uh when we were working out, our, the, the teacher said that uh, he believed that Jesus would work out with his disciples yeah. spiritually and physically. Yeah. And uh, Matthew questioned him and said, well, where's the proof? Can I, mm. I want to see it. And uh, so Mr. Gatton gave proof. And uh, I realized at that moment that he, he cared about There was something that my grandma told me. She said to always question people when they refer to the Bible or say something about the Bible. And so I realized that he, like, truly, truly cared, and he encouraged me to yeah. question things that are super important, including when it relates to the Bible. So he's a huge encouragement to me. That's a good word. That's a good word. That's a good word. My name is Christian Flores, and I knew him through CCS. Um, he was somebody who always said hello to me in the halls mm -hmm. when nobody else would. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one more in the back. Hi, my name is Sherry Axemaker, and I was one of Matthew's teachers at Country Christian. And um, 
you've heard several of our students speak, and I just wanted to say, um, not only as a teacher, I was also his assistant cross-country coach and just kind of his academic advisor, so I spent a lot of times in a lot of different realms with him, but I have never, ever seen a student come to our school before he's, he was there for two and a half months, mm. and I've never seen someone come and have such an impact so quickly, and everything, everything everybody has said about Matthew today is absolutely true, and we watched him live it out. But even as his English teacher, you know, he would get up in front of the room and he would give his oral presentations and his speeches and he always ended it with, you know, that little, and he just, and, and he did, he, every single day he'd come in and he'd ask, how are you doing today? And he took time to listen. And um, he was in pre-calculus and this last year, our pre-calculus teacher had to take a leave of absence due to some pre, uh, to some personal situations. And so when Matthew came in, I said, Matthew, you could do pre-calculus, but it's going to have to be a video course. And he said, okay. And he wasn't so sure about it. Mm. But even after a couple of weeks, I'm checking in with him. And I said, well, how's it going? He goes, it's much better than I thought. I can actually do this. And, you know, just he was always so positive. But the impact that he had in our student body was just amazing. And I remember the day Paige and Matthew came into my office and, and Paige was saying, Matthew said that the Lord told him she wanted him to go to our school. And when I, I happened to be, my husband and I, my husband's the principal of the school, and we were actually on vacation in Missouri on the Friday that Matthew had the accident. And um, it, was a, it was very hard to be away. But I remember reflecting and the Lord was showing me, I was thinking, if Lord, you sent Matthew to our school for a, a small amount of time. What was the reason? I don't want to miss the purpose you had for me for sending him to the school. And I just really want to challenge all of us that what was the purpose for Matthew in your life? Mm -hmm. Don't miss the purpose that God had for you mm -hmm. sending Matthew to your life. That's good. That's great. Hi, I'm Leo Vaughn. I'm the fourth member of the crew that went down to El Salvador. Uh, it was quite a time. Um, other than David, I've never met the rest of the family and Matthew. But about two and a half years ago, Matt Taylor says, hey, Leo, I'm getting a team together to go to El Salvador. Uh, I'd like you to go with us. I says, oh, well, let me think about it. I went home and I told Angela, and she says, you better go. <laughs> So <clears throat> I, I met Dave and Matthew at the airport. That was, that was my first, first meeting with them, first time I ever met them. And here was this long, gangly kid, 14 years old, I think, at the time. And like Matt was saying is that two years ago now, we were there. Mm -hmm. And to watch him, it, it was, we had a lot of fun. At Matthew's expense, sometimes <laughs> he was a kid. You know, you gotta you gotta pick on him some. And uh, but to watch him, he had a heart. Uh, he spent time. There were different things that we could do during the day. We could be drilling on the hole or working with the with the kids in some of their programs. He took one of the days and went and worked with the kids, and he had a blast. And it was so fun to watch him. And those kids chased him everywhere. And he chased them back, and it was back and forth. And he built a relationship with those kids that I don't think they'll ever forget. Yeah. And kids from little guys to kids that were older than he was and thought that he was like 19 or 20 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the impact he made just because he was there and took the time to care mm -hmm. and to see how these folks lived and what he could give to them. He was amazed at how far a dollar would go in El Salvador. It goes a long ways <laughs> because what the difference in value is, but that he could have an impact in that. And, and he was amazed at the impact he could have, not just by what he could give monetarily, but by what he could give of himself. And as I sit here and I've listened to so many of you high school kids, buddies of his, that he encouraged he invested, and that's what I saw in him. He invested what he had in those around him. Mm -hmm. You guys are blessed. 
Go for it. Take what he passed on to you and pass it on. Don't let it stop. He wants it to keep going. One more. We'll take time for maybe one more. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm Luke, and uh, I went to school with him. And I remember that morning Jesse was talking about working mm -hmm. out, and he was challenging Tom. And I was sitting there just cracking up because he would not like. He was right, and he knew he was right, and that was that was <laughs> it. <clears throat> but he kept challenging Tom, and he earned the the nickname that morning, Half Squat, because we were making fun of his form and. <laughs> Anyway, Tom likes giving people a hard time about anything. But uh, it was just so funny listening to him argue with them, and Tom would look at me and, like, shake his head like, this guy. He's just... But anyway, the first day I met him, I uh, didn't show up the first week of school. I was on a hunting trip. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, I was talking to my coach during devotions. The whole high school's gathered. And uh, I'm sitting there, and Matthew comes up to me. He goes, hey, you must be Luke. I'm like... Yeah, who, who are you? He goes, I'm Matthew. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, okay, cool. Shake his hand. Go to turn around to continue talking to my coach about stuff. And he goes, I want to 1v1 you. Like, I, don't, I don't even know you. And apparently some of the guys were talking about me the week I was gone and saying, I don't even know what. But it's just so confusing how this guy I've never met just, he, he just wanted to challenge me, 1v1 me. And I was like, maybe at lunchtime. <laughs> So anyway, lunchtime rolls around, and we play, and uh, I don't remember who won, <laughs> but uh, he, was, he was the guy to, uh, if, you made, if you made a good move and you scored on him, he wouldn't get salty, he'd compliment you, and yeah. he's just, there was always something good to say about everyone. He had nothing bad to say about anyone, and that just, that stuck with me, and I challenged myself to be more like Matthew in that way. Oh, that's a good word. That's a good word. I'm going to invite the worship team to come out. We're going to close our time with worship. And if maybe you thought, oh, I wanted to share something. I didn't have an opportunity. You have your cards. You can, you can write on there and then turn it into the basket. You know, as we think of worship, uh, worship isn't just something we sing out. Matthew was a worshiper. He was a worshiper. And we want to worship because he's worshiping right now in the presence of Jesus. We want to join him in his worship. But, you know, worship isn't just songs we sing. Worship is a lifestyle. And you've listened through the testimonies and stories of Matthew that he lived a life of worship, not just he sang songs of worship. It's because he had the right heart. And so I want to invite you. Um, this could be a really powerful time. For those of you who know Jesus, this can be an easy space to slip into to worship. Sometimes we go, I don't, I don't feel like worshiping. Those are actually the best times to worship. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold at Matthew's in his honor to ask us all to stand wherever you're at, because I think we can stand with him as he stands in the presence of Jesus. And I'm going to invite the worship team. We're going to sing a couple songs, and I want to invite you maybe just to sing along, maybe just sit and listen, whatever uh, feels comfortable for you. But I also want to encourage you that you can sing out, you can praise, that we can turn this opportunity in honor of Matthew into a time of praising Jesus. So let's worship together. Well, the mics, the batteries died in the mics. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna be uh, singing in a minute.
this this morning. Here we go.
made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, He is Lord of all. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
I just want to, in the spirit of the, the moment, I want to ask a question. Would you guys just close your eyes for just a moment? Just take a moment to reflect on everything we've been singing and listening. And We started off today by making the statement that the one thing that Matthew would want for everybody in this room is to leave here today having a relationship with Jesus. It's been shared multiple, multiple times throughout the evening. And I want to ask this question. If you be so bold in honor of Matthew and just that stirring in your own heart, even in the angst of the loss and the questions and the doubts and the emotions and the grief and the sorrow, let me ask this question. How many of you want to live a life as intentional and as purposeful as Matthew? Would you just put up your hand? I want you to keep your hands up because I want to pray over you. I'm going to ask even more boldness that maybe there's some of you here today, you walked in going, I didn't really think twice about God. Actually, I don't, I don't even like a lot of what God is about and some things in my life. It's maybe hard to say yes to following him. And, but after hearing the testimony and the spirit of God speaking through Matthew's life, you said, you know what? I came in here not knowing what to think, but I want to leave here today with the decision. I'm going to follow Jesus. Would you put your hand up as well too? Join the rest of everybody else. And just put your hands up because I just want to pray over you. And the Bible tells us that we live our lives with this great crowd of witnesses cheering us on. And I believe that Matthew is cheering us on from heaven. I believe that. I believe he's cheering us on. I believe that if Matthew is here saying, guys, live, not perfectly, but live for Jesus. And so I just want to pray for everybody who's got their hands lifted up right now. Jesus, we thank you for the legacy, the testimony of Matthew. We thank you that he said yes to you. Such a simple yet profound decision. We don't know why. You took him home, which seems way too early for all of us here. We don't know. We don't have answers to that, but we knew all this. The question can be answered today. Where will I go on the other side of my life on this earth? If I say yes to you, I know what that question can be with certainty. So I pray for everybody that's got their hand lifted high. I pray, Holy Spirit that you would let us live out that same life, the life of Jesus that you lived through, Matthew. Would you live out your compassion, your kindness, your gentleness, that strength, that courage, that foundation that he had, that worshipful heart. We pray, Holy Spirit, would you live that through us as well too. I pray for everyone that raised their hand to say yes to you. I know that Matthew is celebrating right now. He's saying, join me, join me in following Jesus. And I know that he'd be cheering us on and so I just pray for everybody that said yes to you, that they would walk out of here, living their own life of legacy. And Lord, we're all humbled by an amazing parents, and Dave and Paige and the family. Lord, I think a lot of us are saying, Lord, give me their faith, that I can go through the trials of life and still be able to worship you and praise you. I want what they have. So Jesus, we need you because you are the center of that. And so as we close this time in honor of Matthew, we thank you for the life that he was for all of us and the gift that we have. And we thank you for the hope you give us 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I want to just wrap up with one last thought. We want to honor Matthew because there is a fund that you can give to. You know, when you hear the stories of Matthew, he loved to step into other people's brokenness. You know what that means? It means that as Matthew saw others around him, whether he got on a plane and went to a whole other country because there were people there who were dying because they didn't have access to clean water. Think about that. And what we want to do to honor Matthew in that way is we're going to ask you to give to a fund. If you could grab your, your program and you could look, there's a QR code. And if you give to this fund, you're going to partner. You're going to partner with Matthew's legacy. You're going to partner with the Dewar family. And the goal is to build a well for a community. Can you do that? It would honor the family so much. It takes about $10,000 to build a well. But it will physically save lives. It will prevent people from physically dying. But not only that, they get to hear about Jesus. And it will transform a whole community. We want to build this well in his honor. And so you can go right there, the QR code. You can give to the Matthew Dewar Memorial Fund. That's one way. Number two is this is that there are scholarships that Matthew loved to see other kids have the opportunity to go to camp because he knows how much that impacted him. And he would love to know that there was other kids that have the same opportunity he had. So if you give to this same fund in his honor, that there's the opportunity for kids to get scholarships to go to camps. And then lastly, if you give to this fund, there's also the resources that are going to go to basketball initiatives, worship initiatives in the community. So there's a beautiful way that we can be generous. In the same way that Matthew was generous with his own life, he believed that not just taking our physical dollars and putting it or tucking it away, but actually taking it to change somebody else's life. So would you guys do that? Would you take a moment, maybe it's today or tomorrow or tonight, and go on there and just say, hey, I really want to be a part of this opportunity to partner with this fund and to do these things in great honor of Matthew, but to serve and impact so many other people's lives. And it would be a huge blessing to the family to be able to see this happen. So again, thank you to everybody that's here. Thank you. We believe that your life was impacted and touched, and we know that Matthew's legacy does live on through all of us. And so, again, thank you so much. And as you're heading out, if you could take your card, just one more reminder, write your name on there and write maybe some last thoughts of inspiration and place those in the cards on your way out. Again, thank you so much for coming to celebrate Matthew's life and love and support the Dewar family. Thank you again so much. Take care. God bless.